Hey everybody, it's Kate Richburg live from beadshop.com and hey, it's free tip Friday. It's almost the weekend. I know you're as relieved as I am. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm Kate Richburg in front of the camera. We've got our trusty camera woman, Grace Noland behind the camera and we're going to free tip Friday it up. How are you doing today, Gracie Grace? I'm good. How are you, Kate? All it's right. a warm day finally. It's like a warm yeah, we finally got summer. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful weekend here in the Northern California Bay Area for sure. Um, well, I hope you guys have got some great plans coming up for the weekend and maybe some of those plans include beading. So today, so I'm going to, con I have a little bit of a confessional, a confession to make and I know it's just between me and you, right? Um, sometimes for free tip Fridays, you guys. I think about the broad subject of what we're going to do. And then, I don't know, maybe about an hour before airtime, I jump in and I refine my idea. And part of that, I think, keeps the spontaneity to beating when I make things, right? Because sometimes you don't want to plan things out too far ahead. Though Janice, she may be watching because she's working from home today. She may be talking right back to the screen saying, you've got to plan things out. But sometimes I like to be a little more spontaneous. So today, as I was casting wildly around for inspiration, Grace came in and she was wearing this amazing necklace. So I have taken some of my general idea about what I wanted to do today, took that direct inspiration from Grace's necklace, and I've come up with a cool free tip for using those free, so uh, using those leftover soft, soft flex scraps, say that quickly five times, right? Um, that I think you guys are gonna love. So that's my confessional, confession over, so. Is anybody watching Gracie? Is anybody out there? Oh, so many there? people saying hi, and it's raining in London, surprise, and oh. it's, it's snowing in Colorado. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Gita says hello. Hello. Let's see. We have Kathy says hi. Hi, Kathy. Sue, Melanie. Great. Hi, everybody. Linda, Bonnie, Kathy, oh Joanne. Oh my gosh. Tammy. Yes. All right. So we are, are we ready to soft flex? I think and we're ready. Are you going to show the next one? I am. Okay, I'm going to bring it around. Yeah. Because I think you guys will love it. So Grace, even before I show the necklace, do you want to, I don't know, do you want to talk about the provenance of this piece? I thought it was kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, actually, my mom and I, we go garage sailing sometimes or estate sailing. And we saw this necklace, it was all in, in a ball, and I thought it was just a random thing of beads. But it turns out it was a really cute necklace. Right? And it looks so cute on you today mm -hmm. Thank when you. you are wearing it. And I'm like, look. So let me turn this over here. So I don't know. Hopefully you guys can see that. Look at how cool this piece is. It's just kind of a simple, interesting kind of piece that uses buttons as the focal. Um, and the buttons are mixed with some different types of seed beads. Um, the Where I'm getting my soft flex inspiration is from these kind of little wild pieces that are jutting out of... Gracie's necklace and I thought it was kind of a cool you know it really had to me a really cool visual line um, it was playful it was dynamic and I thought that was kind of what I had in my head about these soft flex earrings and things that I had made from soft flex before but it really helped me distill my idea down so part of the design process and I know the past couple of weeks Janice and I have been talking a lot about the design process is taking a look at different pieces of visual inspiration. So I just took my visual inspiration right from Grace's neck and said, <laughs> give me that necklace, Gracie. <laughs> so it was pretty fun. So this is the necklace. I'm gonna set this aside and thank you, Grace. Yeah, you know, no it's always, designing I feel is very kind of full of serendipity, right? Full of serendipitous moments. So. I had been playing around with some different lo like little bits of soft flex like and stuff. That. And so these are the two things. Thanks. I don't even know if you've seen these. Yeah, I was working on them. them. I, like, <laughs> like, I really what's, like them. What's going on? So we were stringing a lot with different, you know, soft flex. Janice and I were kind of going back and forth. And we had a lot of bits left over. And I feel when I string with soft flex, I always have a lot of bits and scraps left over. and. 
sometimes I just like to stash those in a little drawer or in a little baggie because I think they're perfect for, um, you know, use in small projects like these earrings. Yep, question. The quick question was, how are the black beads staying on the necklace? On your necklace they're there? They're glued on, Yeah, these were, and it looks like, you guys, that this... Um, right here that these are on these are glued you could glue with some if I were going to do this I would glue with hypo cement or hypo mm -hmm. cement and this looks like it's monofilament mm. okay rather than soft flex but you could achieve the same thing by gluing onto soft flex or crimping onto soft flex which is what I've done here to crimp Sue says she wants to see the necklace on me maybe at oh the end. okay maybe at the end yeah yeah because you, you're super cute today. yeah <laughs> well, you're super cute every day but you know um we'll we'll we will do a little fashion show right so these were the ones that I did first so let's take a look and I wanted to show you guys when I do earring design and you may remember this from our earring design show way back in the day um Grace, you, I don't know if you can show everybody, but when I design earrings, I get a water glass and I put my pieces or my findings or my things on my water glass, especially when I'm making my second pair of earrings. So things are, is that better? Should I, do I need to move that? There we go. Especially then I can see if what I'm doing is at all the same size Let me move this or I'm symmetrical. Sorry. Oh, no, I should no, I was going to use my little of the dishes. In the, yeah. no, oh, sorry in the about yeah. Yeah, no worries. Let me put these in there. So when I come in to do my second pair, and I'll show you, um, I'll just jump in and start. What I've got here, you guys, I've used the Soft Flex Extreme. Now this is one that I haven't, we haven't really talked about on air yet, but this is um, sterling silver wire underneath the wire or the, the nylon beading cable. It might be easier for me if I show it on my finger. You can really see it just is a beautiful, beautiful silver. I'm a big fan of using this on float necklaces as well, but I'll tell you this Softlex Extreme in the silver and gold I love so much. Um, so what I did was I cut, I don't know, a random length. And you're going to say, Kate, tell me what that length is, even though it's random. So I'll tell you, and this is going to be for the biggest loop. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, whoops, I'm a little caught up there. There we go. I don't know, five inches worth, let's say. That sounds about right. I'm going to cut with my wire cutter. And then, I hope I made this long enough, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. It might be a little short, actually, for the longest one. I'm actually going to put that aside. I'm going to cut six inches. See, this is what happens when I use a ruler. I always measure too short. So I'm going to remeasure here. And that's okay. This piece of soft flex will become another earring. I'm not too worried about it. Let me just cut a nice six inch length. Or maybe even closer to seven. That's even better. There we go. Okay. So the way, I'm going to actually pull this down here so you mm -hmm. guys can see. The way that I started to construct this earring, these are just little, see that? It's just a little loop that I've put two crimp tubes on. I strung a couple of beads. This is our um, Azure Hematite here. And a couple of our shadows, our little shadows, my most favorite bead in the whole wide world. And I've done a couple of those loops. Now I'm going to do the biggest loop, this third guy here. So I'll take my piece of soft flex, which is this one. I can hang this up and I'll pull, I'll string on my crimps. Now, these earrings, you guys, are meant to be kind of intentionally asymmetrical. So, you know what I'm not doing right now? I'm not worrying about making everything exactly right. What yeah, size question? is the crimp tube? Oh, thanks for the reminder. It is um, uh, the 2x2 two two crimp tube, the middle size, or the 2.5x2.5. 
So see, I'm just making a little round here. And now I'm gonna hold it up to where my earring is. And I'm just gonna try and make these big loops about the same size. And I'm not worried too much. I'm putting on a double crimp just for the visual effect. A single crimp would work. But I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna crimp both of those at the same time. Some of you saw on our Wednesday broadcast how I kind of did an endless crimp or a double crimp. It's the same thing. We've got some great skill builders. You can watch that Wednesday broadcast. And Janice has some really great on the first Softflex broadcast from two weeks ago. She has a great skill builder that shares a little bit more about crimping. It goes into a little more detail. Yeah, question, Gracie? No, uh, our friend from Softlex, Sarah, says it's fun to explore the wire as part of a design rather than just a stringing supply. It opens up a whole new world of design. Yeah, I agree, Sarah, and that's why I love um, creating with the colored Softlex. I really do look at it as an element in the design rather than just the stringing material. That's exactly right. It's great, thank you so much for watching, Sarah. We appreciate the support of Softflex for sure. And we really loved, if you guys haven't gone on to the broadcast to the page for Softflex, um, Sarah did a great challenge from uh, with beadshop.com. Uh, when we sent her that challenge box, it was really fun. So you can find it right on their Facebook Live page. So now what I did, you can see I've kind of lined these up here um, in my little order. And the ear wire that I've used, and you can see it, it's hanging right here on the cup. This is our canoe ear wire. Now we have a lot of different ready-made ear wires that you could use. I chose this one because it has a really contemporary feel to it. And I like just how the front of this looked. Um, and I chose the sterling because it really ma uh, matches nicely with the sterling um, Softflex Extreme. So to connect it to that ear wire, you can see that ear wire has a closed loop. So I'm using our very smallest oval jump rings. And I'm going to need two of those. So I'm going to put all three of my little rounds of Softflex on that oval ring. And I'm using my bent chain nose and my regular chain, chain nose to close it up. Then I'm going to grab one more ring, open that up, slide this sucker on, and then put it on my ear wire. A bent chain nose and a straight chain nose, you guys, are perfect for opening and closing those jump rings. So now I just hang it up and let's take a look at how things are hanging. And as I see here, notice how this one that I made before, I really did make this loop actually a lot bigger than this guy. So this one, you know, I might save, I might make maybe save for another pair and maybe I'll eventually take that one off and make it a little bit longer because I think these are a little too close, mm -hmm. but that's okay. I'm going to continue on to finish this up a little bit. Yeah, question, Grace? Um, I think it's Drea. She says, I miss what jump rings Kate used. Where's Gita with the links when I need her? She did link a few right, things. Right, did and, she? And, yeah. Uh, Drea's been linking too. Yeah. Uh, that's the smallest, I think it's our four millimeter oval, maybe. Smallest oval. Yeah, yeah our, that we only have one oval jump ring, and it's this one. So now I'm going to come in and I'm gonna make the little legs. Uh, Mimi's asking if you made them the mirror image of each other. Yeah, ish. You know, as mirror image as I'll get, Mimi, honestly. Because these are more, I think, I look at these as more of an abstract design. And you know, when you look at abstraction, if you go to a museum or if you're a fan of Alexander Calder like I am, you know, I think part of the, I don't know, the coolness of an abstract design is sometimes it's asymmetry. So see, I'm just kind of lining everything up. I put two of the Azure Hematite, one of those two millimeter um, crimp tubes. I need to 
turn it a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm a little off in my crimping. There it goes. I crimp and then I fold. I'm using this Zeron 4-in-1 crimping plier and then I just come in and crimp it closed. And then I can come in and I can kind of see where I want to cut it. I have a little bit of length down here so I'm just going to clip it. And then I'll just continue to do that on all three of these. And you know what? Even so, this this one's just fine. It's a little bit smaller, but with the weight of, of this little dangle here, I think it's fine. So I'm not going to even worry about it. And then I'll just go in and add the rest of my dangles. So what I've got is this finished piece. Now you could add more beads or crimp more beads down here. Add a little wire wrap dangle here if you wanted. The sky's the limit, really. Okay. Let's take a look at this other one that's even more abstract, what I did here. And I'll tell you a secret. I didn't really plan this at all. What I did was I just started... Whoops, go back up there on that cup. I started with a piece of Softflex, like this. This is the Softflex, the Metallics series. It's the um, copper in the fine, the .014, it's the copper color. And I just love the way this copper looks. So what I did was I poked through some of the extra beads that we had, and we happened to have a strand of the four millimeter from childhood, the Azure, he or the, the Carnelian um, Semi-Precious. And so I just pulled a few of those out. I like the way it looked with our copper. And then I thought, well, maybe I want my, my crimp to be a little less prominent. So now I'm using the 1.5 millimeter crimp. So all I did was I strung on maybe two of the from childhood and one, whoops, I have to hold it in my hand. One, I know you want to go on there. I'm going to get another one here. One from childhood, I mean, sorry, one, 1 1.5 millimeter. And I didn't even measure, I just crimped it on. So I'll crimp, put it in the tiniest little station and fold it. And then, see, I'm just going to hold it up there and I'm going to say, yeah, that's about right. So what did I do? I went here and I, maybe I came up here and see how I added a couple of, of, um, I added another piece of soft flex right here. So if that's this one here, I'll cut another piece and just, I don't know, add it. There's no, I don't know, there's no wrong move. Yep, so we had a question. Sure. Let's see, Melanie asked, who won the bead stoppers from Wednesday? So I oh, mouthed Cara to yes. Louise, and Cara came, and she she wrote down Kim Crawford. Yes, did. Kim Crawford Wasn't that her was birthday the winner, the and day? it was her birthday the other day. Wasn't that awesome? Yep, we did the random number generator with Cara, and Kim, your name came right up. So they went out with your order. So I hope, if and when you watch this, or if you've gotten your package already, that you enjoy those. So see, I'm just, I'm hardly even measuring you guys. I'm just putting on this crimp tube. And I'll bet if you've been stringing with Softflex in the last week, you have some of these scraps laying around. So I'll kind of hold it up and I'll go, all right, that looks good. Maybe I'll push that crimp tube up a little bit more. And I'm just going to crimp. I mean, you know, again, they're asymmetrical. They're a pair, but they're not an exact matched pair. Then where did I attach them? I attached something up here. So I'll do that. I'll get another piece of soft flex. I don't know, a few inches, three inches maybe. Cut it. Get that one millimeter. I mean, you know, sometimes abstraction is can be planned, but you don't want to 
plan the spontaneity or the interesting design appeal out of it too much, right? At least I don't. So I've got that one millimeter. It's a little small, but it fits on there. And I'm going to slide all of this down. Is that the right one to slide? Nope, it's this one. And then I'll hold it up and I'll go, okay, there's that crimp tube. So this crimp tube wants to come down here. And then now I've got some legs to crimp on and another leg over here to crimp on. So I'll just go ahead and crimp this closed. And that's really how I built this earring, you guys. I just kept adding beads. And let's see, I've got one more. So let me add a bead right here to this one and then I'll loop, or I think to this one maybe. And then I'll loop back through and show you guys what I did, how I Sarah closed it. Sarah says, um, scrap earrings are the best. A few leftover beads and a few scraps of wire can make something beautiful. Yeah, it is really for sure. I just love the, um, the lightness, you know? Spring is here, summer's almost here. We need to lighten it up, you guys. So the way I closed it, now I'm using that 2.5, a bigger, a bigger one, bigger crimp tube. And I'm going to come back in, maybe I'll add before this goes on, I think this might need one more. I'll just float the bead on there. There we go, put that in. I could always, let me show you this. My brain is going a mile a minute. If I don't quite know where I wanna crimp it, I'll just put on this tiny crimp. I'll put on my four millimeter round. If I can see the hole, why do these bead holes have to be so small? I'll go through this big crimp. And then I can come back in later and crimp this in place wherever I feel like I want it to be. Okay, but for now that crimp tube can just float. Then I'm gonna come back in with just one, the longest leg. That's gonna be my earring loop. And then I've got one more leg that I can come in and crimp onto. Okay, and then I'll add I could open up this loop, but actually let me loop this through the ear wire. I'll Trudy take it out. Says, yeah, question? She saves all her Ceylon and Chinese knotting cord to make tassels. Yeah. And Melanie said you can make a nice tassel like this. Yeah, you sure could. I think that, um, and you could even mix, you know, I've used my leftover bits of Softflex, even when I'm wire wrapping a, you know, if I'm making a kind of an interesting tassel be kind of fun to throw in a few of these little stiffer um, pieces. And you can just kind of play around with the, let me pull this up, let me use my tool. Sorry Grace, I'm going to turn so you guys, so you can see me here. I don't want my hand blocking. There we go. You know, the first one is always super easy and breezy and fun and, you know, you're like, oh, I'm just creating. And then if you want the second one to at all have the same kind of feeling, you have to be a little more careful. But you can see I'm going to hang this up here. So what I would do next is I'll come in, I'll crimp this, I'll slide this up to where I want it, I'll crimp it cut away these extra pieces and then continue to kind of embellish what I've got going on up down here. Yep, question Gracie. So Kim wants to know if we can do a Size Matters broadcast. Oops, people are. And she's saying she ends up wondering what jump ring or what crimp and what gauge or what finding, etc. Mm -hmm. Kathy that's, says that's in 2005 one. she made um, jewelry for, and her daughter's jewelry of all the, I'm sorry, her daughter's jewelry and all of her bridesmaids' jewelry for yeah. a wedding using Softlex. Yeah. And Sarah says, if you rub it over a scissor, you can make it curl too. Not applicable in this project, but fun, but for some fun other designs. Oh yeah, for sure. Like even with this scrap. And thanks, Sarah, for 
Saying so, I like doing that a lot, and I find that if you just, sometimes I even use the edge of my plier, and you just need to be really careful, Ooh. and you put an intentional curl in it. Let me go back over here. And if you string this now with seed beads, the seed beads will weight it a little bit, but it'll keep that curve to it. Um, and it's kind of a fun, a fun way to use soft flex that way. Um, but once this kink, just as a reminder, you guys, once it's kinked, that kink stays in. Okay, so do be aware. But you could just come in and you know crimp little pearls on here or anything. It would be kind of fun, and that would even also be mm -hmm. kind of an interesting um, architectural element. Um, element. That's what I'm looking for. Um, in your earrings as well. Great. Alrighty, so any, any more questions, you guys? I'll just reiterate the sizes that I used. We used some Softlex Extreme in the fine. We used it in the sterling silver. And then we also used the Softlex, the metallic, and the copper, which was great. I just love. I used our smallest oval jump ring. And then we used kind of our multi-pack, the 2.5 and the 1.5 millimeter um, crimps. That ear wire that I used, that was our canoe ear wire with our azure hematite and then our copper. I love these lever backs with the um, four millimeter for ch from childhood. But it's a great project to use up your little bits and pieces. You know, if you have some things scattered on your bead table from, you know, the week that you've been making, it's kind of a fun way to put things together with just your little scraps. So, yeah, and of course you can find all of these on our website on beadshop.com. Um, so before we go, Gracie, I wanted to mention a couple of things. Yeah. We've got a gemstone sale this weekend. We do. Right? And so I don't know if you guys have opened up your newsletters yet, but there is a coupon code in there that will give you 25% off our gemstones all weekend, actually through Monday. Um, I should have checked that code before we came on, but gem I bet you remember <laughs> gem 25. So whoops, when you're shopping and you put gem 25 in your coupon code box, it will knock 25% off all of your gemstones. And it's perfect for getting some gemstones to dangle off of these cool earrings. So you're gonna put that necklace mm -hmm. on, right? So everybody can see how cool that looks on you. Totally. All right. Nice broadcast. Great. And love the button necklace. Oh, too. great. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this camera around because Gracie's gonna go on the other side of the camera. I'm gonna put on my glasses so I can see her. There she is. Look at that. I'm gonna just get right in there, Grace. There. Oh, wow. This camera does work pretty darn well, if I do say. That looks great. So can you guys see how that really, you're getting a lot of hearts for that, Gracie Grace. Nice. It really looks nice. And see how it just hangs asymmetrically. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's not super planned out or thought. It just really, really looks nice. And so do you, Gracie. Oh, thank you very You're much. welcome. Oh, thanks, everyone. All right. Well, I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll hand that to you. And here. I guess we'll just say we'll goodbye just officially. Say bye. See, look at all those hearts you're getting. <laughs> look at those. I'm going to go back to where my jacket is. All righty, here we are. Okay, so thanks so much, you guys, for watching our Tip Free Tip Friday. I hope you pulled a lot of great tips out of that to use your leftover Softlex. And big shout out, thanks, Sarah, from Softlex. Sarah Oler, we really appreciate you supporting and watching, so thank you so much. And to all of you guys, thank you for your shares and your comments. We love it. Wednesday, we've got an amazing Facebook Live coming up. Emily is making her teacher debut. She's going to be teaching us how to crochet. It's going to be amazing. So questions, you know where to find us, beadshop.com. See you soon.